China may have just given the U.S. the biggest gift in the history of mankind. We're going to break that down today. My name is Paul Barron. Welcome back to Tech Path. All right, so everybody knows, you've probably seen the news, really from where China's position on the digital yuan and kind of how it potentially could affect Bitcoin. Many people have looked at this as a negative for Bitcoin, mainly because of the fact that the miners are kind of, in essence, being pushed out of China. What I'm going to show you today is contrastingly different of where the potential global market is going to be moving and the fact that we are in a battle. And when I say we, being the U.S. and Western uh, and modern world is in a battle for the life of what is going to be the digital currency that drives society into the future. So we're going to dive into that very deep. Before we get started, though, I want to jump over to trade the chain real quick and take a look at where the market is. Total market cap sitting in at 1.56 trill. Uh, average daily sentiment, somewhat neutral today. This is kind of one of those soft days, which is, uh, as my friend Rob over on Digital Asset News talks about, uh, this is one of those to do dollar cost averaging on if you are looking to get in the market and continue to move cash into your crypto assets. Bitcoin holding in at 37.2. And Bitcoin's daily sentiment uh, still very bullish, which I agree with that. Ethereum 2276, a good entry point for those of you who are dollar cross averaging right now on Ethereum, uh, which is one of my big plays. There are some things happening, though, that I want to talk about uh, that really kind of is going to shift my thinking around what altcoins to be pushing with and over Ethereum. I want to do another video on that, but uh, definitely going to get into that. And then hottest on Twitter on the last 48 hours, uh, you've got Titan in there, obviously, because of its crazy scenario and uh, Mark Cuban's, uh, you know, situation. I like Mana up 142%. And then also Chili's, which has been really kind of on the hot list for quite some time. We're going to do a breakdown on Chili's too. I promise you, I know we've been getting uh, requests. I've got a couple of tweets back on it and some DMs. Definitely are going to hit uh, Chili's. And I, I know Mana is on the list, but we just have, have not had a chance to get to it. Total tra trading volume a little bit lower. We're going into the weekend, so we'll see how all that kind of flows out. For the weekend, I don't anticipate any major fireworks, but I want to jump over to the first story today. And this is really where it all started. And that is on the topic of Bitcoin miners in Sichuan ordered to shut down. So this right here is a pretty... Big issue because they continue, meaning they, the Chinese uh, uh, Republic of China, uh, the PRC, People's Republic of China, um, has continued to move in the position of pushing out the miners. So here was the situation following a meeting. Science and Tech Bureau of, of Sichuan, uh, Yan, the Energy Bureau, notified Bitcoin mining operators that they must shut down by June 25th. This was a fast turn. But there's some reasons here of why this is happening and it, why it's happening very quick. Because I think a lot of people looked at a lot of these Bitcoin miners being pushed out maybe by the end of the year. No, China is amped up their acceleration on moving into the digital yuan and why the digital yuan is being posed as potentially a global currency to essentially replace the dollar. Now I'm talking about the fiat dollar versus what China is doing with the digital uh, currency. So big deal here. Uh, also just kind of from Wu Blockchain, wanted to kind of show you a, a quick tweet here on June 18th, uh, issued a document requesting the power generation companies are required to immediately stop supplying power to any virtual currency mining and report the relevant situation on the 25th. This pretty much states that it is over for Bitcoin mining in China. So all of these companies are going to be looking for a home, most likely migrating quickly into uh, hopefully the Western world, whether it's Europe, South America, maybe, which we could see that uh, with what's happening in El Salvador and, and just the, the, some of the crazy ideas of volcanic you know, steam used as alternative and renewable energy uh, potentials. So lots, of, lots happening when you look at where this is going. But the document identified 26 large mining projects and required to be monitored and shut down. At present, the hash rate of Bitcoin and Ethereum has not fluctuated. So again, I think that is because we are seeing some backhaul on some of the other miners to really kind of pick up the case. But where I do feel that this going is going to have is it will have a small impact 
in the coming months in in the amount of ETH and Bitcoin and some of the key uh, hash rate that is uh, essentially put into the market will be affected. And I want to jump to this next story, which is really the why all of this happen is happening. And that is China's Digital Yuan is now available at 3,000 ATMs in Beijing. Now, Beijing being pretty much the center, it's the New York of China. And for it to see this kind of movement quickly on the conversion feature uh, is huge because this right here is going to help accelerate the Digital Yuan for the Chinese population and essentially move in to what I think is when you think about CBDCs, uh, central bank digital currencies, and why they are so important, China, remember, China is not building the digital yuan on a blockchain framework. So there's a lot of potential here for two things. One is acceleration of the currency itself and manipulation, which they've been able to do for the last few decades in terms of their own uh, currency. In the tr in traditional fiat currency, they've been able now. I think we'll be able to really start to shift this and manipulate this currency to a very unique position, which is one of the reasons I think China. Uh, well, it's, everybody knows it's one of the reasons why China has moved to and the strategy of getting to a digital currency. So, where does that leave the U.S.? Where does that leave all these miners? And what happens to Bitcoin? if China is no longer in the game, if you remove a couple of billion people out of the ecosystem of cryptocurrency, potentially and most likely will be illegal in China in the coming years because the digital yuan will just overtake that society. What happens to the rest of the cryptocurrency market? Well, you think about it. I mean, we are talking about the rest of the globe. Remember that the dollar has been, US dollar, has been the cornerstone as the reserve currency for a couple of, a few decades, three decades. Uh, that in itself and the trace of a potential underlying asset that could help support both fiat and the USD, uh, excuse me, US digital dollar that will be coming. There's a huge opportunity here for Western world to really start accelerating. Now there is a little bit of a lag time in between when China, and I think this is a strategic and calculated move by the PRC and what they're trying to do in terms of dominating the digital currency space and moving quickly to basically put the rest of the Western world on their back heels. So we may see, this is fascinating because if you look at what's happening in uh, Africa and the, the countries within Africa and then South America, these countries are being kind of forced into this scenario of accepting Bitcoin in the sense that their fiat money is in many cases very devalued. But the bigger aspect is, is the, the ability for them to utilize what is now a global stage digital asset to the next level. So I think there's a, there's a lot of dominoes and chess pieces being moved around on the global stage right now. And I wanna to jump to uh, this little report right here which was Market Watch House hearing reveals bipartisan support for a government-backed digital dollar. This was just this week. Now there's a little bit of concern here, and and when I say a little bit of concern, in the sense of the Republicans and or uh, the GOP may end up trying to push back on this, mainly because of the privacy scenario. But Naya Narula, the director of MIT's Digital Currency Project, explained to the committee the benefits of a digital dollar. We're going to talk about uh, MIT's currency project. The U.S. electronic payment system as suffering from high fees, limited access, because it does not evolve fast enough uh, to keep up with the pace of the demand for online digital payments. So this is a traditional scenario that is occurring right now in traditional fiat money. And really because of online growth that we've had over the past uh, 16, 17 months, that the influx on payment processors, banks, and institutions has been put to an all time high this is one of the challenges that they don't necessarily see the current infrastructure being able to keep up with that. So that's something that's kind of new when you look at where MIT is trying to study this and why the digital currency needs to come in place. So Neural also, whose group is collaborating with the Federal Reserve Bank of Boston to study a potential Fed bank digital dollar, added that with, while private cryptocurrencies may evolve to solve these problems, this is very big, 
for them to say this, this is MIT, while cryptocurrencies may evolve to solve these problems, they also present risks, the immaturity of the technology and its ability to provide widely available, highly secure and scalable pen, uh, payment transactions. Though that is a point where I think what MIT is trying to do is one, support their project, and really two, move quickly into the Federal Reserve for a digital dollar. Now, where this is really gonna get interesting is how the traditional banks are gonna be involved in this. So that in itself, what with what they're doing, is a huge, I think it's a huge move in the right direction. I think, of course, the pressure from China right now is really pushing the agenda here. Now, I wanna to jump to MIT Labs uh, Digital Currency Initiative. Uh, so basically, I love the fact that they use the hypothetical central bank di digital currency. I mean, come on guys, everybody knows it's gonna happen. This is a reality. It may happen instead of the next decade, could happen in the next three to five years. This would be a major, major move. I wanna jump over here to a couple things. Last decade, implosion, uh, explosion in digital currencies and in recent years, leading economists, central bankers, and policymakers have joined technologists and entrepreneurs in exploring this new frontier. The potential benefit and design choices of central bank digital currencies, that's why you, you guys hear this all the time, are being debated in conferences, white papers, et cetera. MIT, of course, is all over this. We at Digital Currency Initiative are excited to begin a collaboration with the Federal Reserve Bank of Boston to develop the hypothetical CBDC as a team dedicated to open source software development and cryptocurrency research. DCI has been investigating the steps necessary to securely and responsibly issue a CBDC since 2016. So they've been on it for quite some time, a little bit slower. And I think the fact that we've seen China move so quickly on the digital yuan, I really did not anticipate these kinds of acceleration moves by mid year. So China is trying to position in a big way. Here are the considerations that have to be put into play when you move to a digital currency and a digital dollar. Whether you look at it from an aspect of, and this is something that people talk about in uh, Bitcoin all the time, and that is Bitcoin is a criminal device. Absolutely not a criminal device because it is a blockchain, meaning it's completely traceable. The ability to be able to go in, now it is private, sure, but it is traceable in the sense of you understanding where these potential scenarios could go. There are some things that are going on in terms of federal authorities that could be starting to get a lot closer to blockchain. And remember, the feds are moving quickly with amping up their analysts and engineers, software developers, and essentially hackers that are understanding and really uh, kind of putting their head around where digital currencies and, and digital assets are moving in the future. Because this is really kind of where things are going. I wage a little bit different. And that is that digital currencies like the Yuan will become the new haven for criminals. This is where it, it will happen, and uh, I just want to kind of talk about that. Here is a piece, this course is a, a very, one of those unknown sites that uh, I often frequent. It's called Hacker Moon. If you guys know my background, uh, I used to work with a lot of hackers in, the, in my day, and uh, I've seen a lot and, and also understand kind of where that's, that group uh, moves and how they move. But this is kind of an interesting thing. Digital Yuan proposed impact on domestic Chinese and international finance markets is one, of the, uh, one that can simply not be disputed. Wall Street Journal has gone so far as drawing parallels between China's original invention of paper currency to the digital yuan, proposing that it is a reimagination of money that could shake the pillar of American power. This is real, but here are some things that are also real. Money laundering in China is huge. China essentially is considered and being called the world's largest, biggest source. Let me kind of just highlight that. The biggest source of dirty funds with China accounting for nearly 50% of the 858 billion of illicit funds flowing into tax havens and Western banks. This was back in 2010. They anticipate this now at double that rate. So we're talking about 1.6 trillion in illicit funds. So with you put, with you put, all right, so let's just kind of draw the circle here for a second. China's moving very quickly to develop the digital yuan 
Now they're rolling it out. They've got it in, in uh, Beijing in 3,000 ATMs, quickly moving into their society. Not hash rate you know, enabled. It's not a blockchain product. This is manipulatable, uh, if that's a word. It can be manipulated. This is the perfect vehicle for China to continue their dominance, one, of their people, and two, of their positioning to try to take the global stage and become the world's reserve currency. I think there are so many opportunities here for Bitcoin and Ethereum and all of these uh, high, these high level projects, especially on, based on Ethereum, that could completely supplant where this is going. And this is, now remember, I, I'm a position that there will be a digital dollar at one point, and it will most likely have an underlying pegging across the blockchain. And it may be various blockchain projects that end up being the supplant of digital currency and assets that can help drive, much like stocks are today, help driving the dollar and the economic position. Now the question will be whether or not MIT moves in the direction of blockchain to a high level or if they jump onto one of Ethereum's projects, whether it's something like Solana, and there's some reasons I'm saying that, and I'll, I'll jump to that. I'll, actually, it's too much for this video, but f follow closely, because we're gonna be talking about Solana. If you, if you haven't caught my last video about Solana being a head-to-head -head with Ethereum, you've gotta watch that video, because it really breaks this down. So all of this really goes into a huge scenario of China trying to move quickly and trying to reposition or position beyond where the G7 is going. And that is mostly the UK, Australia, the United States, Canada, et cetera, Germany, and move into this position. Here are the things. We are at a arms race right now in digital currency and crypto assets, digital assets overall. This is going to be big. What do I think is gonna happen between now and the end of the year? Because China pulled the two triggers, first trigger, kick out the Bitcoin miners, second trigger, roll out digital yuan at an accelerated rate. Because of that, I believe we are gonna see Bitcoin moving more likely to the $200,000 mark. Many people have been po pointing at the 100K because of where we are at right now under 40K. There's a lot of world stage happening right now this is huge. And we have a lot of runway between now and the end of the year. So in a prediction for you, one Lambo, one Bitcoin. That's pretty much where I think we're going to see it. Just because of the acceleration, the situations uh, that are happening in South America, it's going to get very political with the World Bank and how that IMF is going to essentially control funds into South America. How that plays out will have a big, a big relevancy as to whether or not uh, Bitcoin really starts to push the pedal to the metal. But China, I think, is in control here right now, and they are pretty much guiding the market for all of these developers. What I don't understand yet is why, and I do understand it, is that Washington is just not, our lawmakers are not ready for this, just like they weren't ready for the internet, they weren't ready for internet advertising, they weren't ready for social media, they're not ready for uh, cryptocurrency and digital assets. That's a problem because we will be behind However, because the United States is such an entrepreneurial country, I think the centralization of Bitcoin mining is coming here, and I think the centralization of all of the major projects globally are gonna be centered right here in the US, which is gonna be big for the US, and put, put potentially the US back in control of maintaining the, the world's reserve currency, whether that is the US digital dollar or could it be something else that is blockchain related? All right, so if you guys are listening in over on the podcast right now, these are the kind of things we break down, really kind of analyzing where all this is going, giving you guys some insights, hopefully to help you move to the next. Remember, this is not financial advice. You always should do your own research. You've got to go out there and do things just like we do. Kind of follow the yellow brick road. Make sure you dive deep into it. Then go in and look at some TA to help you make your investment decisions. Make sure and uh, subscribe over on the podcast if you're listening in here or watching on YouTube. Make sure and subscribe, man. We just hit the 50K mark. We're going for 100 this year. That's do it, Tech Path Tribe. I love it. That's a good one, Tech Path Tribe. Anyway, if you want to reach us, it is producer at reverendnetworks.com or hit me up on Twitter at Paul Barron. I'll catch you next time right here on Tech Path.